Hey, how's it going guys? Daniel here, aka Hashlips. Welcome to today's episode and series where I will be taking you guys through how to create a code generative art program like this. So there you can see I just ran the program by running node um, index.js. We are going to write this program in node and we'll be able to create these cool different looking artworks. Now you don't have to stick with eyes. I just chose the topic eyes because it looks pretty cool and nice in a square format but you can choose and play around with the code that I'm going to show you um, in any way of you choosing. The purpose of this tutorial is to actually create something that I don't see a lot out there on YouTube and that is how to create these programs. The problem is that most people show you a little bit of it, some people um, show you the, the hard w working parts of it and I have even made a video showing how Hashlips, our project on the blockchain works which we'll also talk about later on. But no one really shows you from a beginner level um, start to finish and that's what I'm going to be doing today and we're also going to do it in a proper way where we can make it reusable and you can use it for multiple different projects. So let's dive right into it. First of all, thank you so much. Like and subscribe to this video if this is going to help you because that helps me out anyway. So for this series to complete it, you at least need to know a little bit of coding. You need to know what Node.js is and you actually need to know how to use an IDE. So my favorite choice of IDE is a Visual Studio Code. Start up a new folder um, and just open it in your favorite Visual <coughs> Studio, <laughs> in your favorite IDE. Uh, mine is Visual Studio. So do that and just make sure you have Node installed. To check that, we're going to say Node. Dash V, I've got 14.15, version 14.15 installed, and that should be good. And even if you have a higher version, um, it will still uh, work. But if you want to do exactly what I'm doing, just install this version of Node, uh, Node.js, and you should be fine. The next thing that we're going to be doing is kicking off the um, actual app by initializing it. So we're going to run npm init. And what this will do is it will ask us a bunch of questions below as you see the package name which we can write a new description but I'm just going to leave everything as default version description and just say enter 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 and then we're done right we got our package.json file over here so what is a package.json file well obviously you know that this is a configuration file if you don't know this is the configuration file for running the app it contains uh, properties and fields such as the script files that you can run you can set up a lot in this file for the configuration but one thing that we use it for is actually telling the program that this is a node um, program that it needs to run but apart from that it also has our dependencies which will be in here in just a second after we've installed it so the next thing you want to do is clear it and you want to install canvas the canvas api so basically uh, because we're running it on node, uh, we need to install a package where there is a package already called canvas and we're going to be using that package to actually do the work and generate the images. But you can now start running and you can say um, npm install canvas. Okay, you can do this, but I found that I like using yarn to start off all my all my project so we'll be using yarn so I'm gonna say yarn add canvas and the reason for that is because yarn actually works better for me than uh, npm sometimes it it just does so I'm sticking with yarn but if you want to use the npm package manager you can also do that I just generally use them to start up the project but hey each to their own. So while this is busy installing, we can just take this moment to kind of discuss what the project is we're going to build. Now, there's a few different ways of generating art. There's a way of doing it with AI where the computer actually generates the artwork itself. Or there's a way where we can kind of generate the art by using SVGs and it's built on the fly on a browser or on a render engine, something like that. Or we can do it this way. Right, then there's much, there's much more ways, but anyway, many more ways. But what I want to get to is the way we are going to be doing it is in a nice, clean way where we combined an artist's input and um, the computer's input to create something new. 
And that's the kind of generation that we are talking about today, which is going to be very special. After you've installed it with Node and you've added um, ca the canvas, what you'll see is you'll get this yarn.lock file, which is fine. Don't worry about that too much. And also this should be updated. There we go. Dependencies, Canvas, and you can then just have Canvas dependency in there. Um, you can just search for Canvas um, on NPM and you can actually read up more about the library. I'm just here to show you guys the code. So go and install Canvas and you'll also see your node modules. Now basically, just to give you a short description of what this is, these are all dependencies to make sure that your program can run, right? But because we installed Canvas, you'll see Canvas in the node modules, and there it is. It's just a normal built, um, a normal, uh, how can I say, program, right? So we're just going to use this as a library, basically, in essence. So you don't need to dive around in node modules, but this is the start of our project. Let's get going. The next thing we want to do is actually create the index.js, right? And what we want to do, let's just clear the console by pressing Command K. Uh, what we want to do in Node.js, just test it. So we can say console.log the start, right? We're going to log the start. And how do we run this project now? So any Node um, project can be ran just by calling the command Node down here. You have to be in the directory, so if you're not, just go to the directory where your package.json is and your index, obviously. So you can say index.js, and if we run it, you can see the start, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to import fs. So this is going to be for file system, and what we want to do is we want to require it. So this is how you import um, in Node.js. We have to use the require statement to kind of import files. So this is FS just sort short for file system, which we're going to import. And then the other thing that we also need is now in Canvas, right? So what we need in Canvas is also uh, the, the Canvas itself, and we need load image. So let's import actually two things, right? So we're going to import create uh, Canvas and load image from well, not from, sorry, we require uh, canvas, like, like so. Okay, and we need an equal statement over there. All right, so we're going to use this create canvas, and we're going to use load image to actually load the content. Um, it, it needs to load before we can render it, basically. So how we're going to make use of these modules is we're going to have another const, um, canvas is equal to create so now we actually use create canvas and what creates canvas takes in is a width and a height so we're going to make it a thousand by a thousand pixels basically um, then what we also need is to say the ctx is going to be equal to canvas dot get context so basically what these lines do and let me just explain to you them quickly we have a file system that we import there at line one. Line two, we import the create canvas and load image from Canvas, the API that we actually, or the library that we actually imported. Then we create a variable called canvas. So this is just where we create the canvas. Now, if you console.log canvas, it will just give you a canvas with a width and a height, but we actually want the get context. Uh, we want the context underlying in the canvas, basically. So that's why we assign that to a CTX variable ctx just short for context that means that we can use ctx to do things like draw and create new shapes and actually do cool things with the canvas so now we kind of have these two and the next thing that we'll need is a function to actually draw now i'm just quickly going to import a random file an image file in here so we can redraw it on our canvas we have our image in here eyeball.png this is how it looks it's just a red eyeball the freakiest thing but anyway let's go and draw this out on our canvas so first thing that we need to do is we actually need to create a function to draw and in order to do this we're going to use the ctx the context and we're going to make use of the canvas you'll see it all happening right now so basically what we want to do is we want to say let's create a function and call it draw layer and the reason for that is because 
our program later on will have multiple layers to draw so we're just going to consider this as a layer and we're going to give it a function so just a normal arrow function and in here what we want to call is the load image that we imported here at the top okay so here we're going to say load image and what load image takes is a path to a file now our path is in the root so we're just going to say this is eyeball.png and um, i believe that is all that it takes in yes so um load image is going to take in an image file and what it basically is going to do is it's going to await it's going to say cool because this is an asynchronous function it's going to wait before the data is loaded so what we can do is we can um, concatenate this now with the then clause and say well um, data is going to be equal to this so it's going to take in the data as a parameter now after this have loaded and let's just see something right let's just console.log uh, what data is so we can see it and then to call this function we need to put it here at the bottom so that we can do that and when we run the program here you can see exactly what's being console.log right so we get the image data and it knows what image it wanted to load and it says complete so basically this now has completed it so we get the image data and we know that it's loaded because we don't want to do any operations on images that haven't loaded yet but there's a better way of doing this asynchronous call right so the best way is to say async make your function actually async here then what we can do is we can say image is equal to so const image it means that we are going to await for this operation to be done and then put the image data and image in a variable now the reason why this is a bit better is because it creates cleaner code than the then method but you can use both it doesn't matter um, after this after we have awaited for this line we're going to go to the next line and what we want to do here is say ctx dot um, draw image now draw image takes in an image file it takes in an x a y so it takes in an image it takes a x y and uh, width and height right so what we want to do is we want to pass in these parameters to it so we already have our image which we're going to replace there uh, for x and y it kind of tells the draw function where to start drawing the image so i'll explain that a bit later um, just a bit better and for the height and the width we're going to make it a thousand by a thousand because that's how big our canvas is so basically at this point now this will actually draw the image onto a canvas but we won't be able to see it what we can see is just console.log um, this ran right uh, we can run this and what we will, will see is this ran so it means that um, this executed the function nothing went wrong it loaded the image and it drew it on the uh, context of the canvas but there's no way for us to observe it right so the next step what we need to do is actually create a function to save the image because we want to redraw our image our layer onto the canvas and then save a new image file how can we do that so let's create a function and call it save um, save layer right um, basically what save layer is going to do is we are going to first start off with just an empty function and then we'll work from there so basically in this function we're going to make use of the file system that we've imported at the top and we are going to use the fi um, function write file as sync meaning that this file takes in two things it takes in the path of the, the output path right so we can just output it in our root directory and just say new um, image right dot png and the next thing that it takes is it takes in a buffer right it's a buffer array and how can we get a buffer array well our image over here so not our image our canvas can actually be converted to a buffer and that's what we're going to do right now so basically what we can do is we can import canvas over there right well not import we can use it as a parameter and then what we want to do is we want to say dot to buffer and then to buffer we have to explain to it what type of image data 
So I think it's image PNG. Okay. And then this is enough. This is enough for it to, you know, go and write the file to create for us a new file. And that's perfect. That's all we need. But now we need to call this function. So we'll call it here on the this um, ran with a console. Actually, let's keep the this ran there. And what we'll do is we'll call the save layer here and we'll actually pass in the canvas. Now, the canvas that we're passing in here is not the canvas that we are, or the context that we are using in here. This is actually the global canvas, which we imported right in the beginning here at line four. So once we've called this, this ran will run. And then also let's put a, another console.log in here and say, to say um, image created, right? And that's it. And now let's run this function and see what happens. So the first thing that happens is this ran goes and kicks off there. And then it says create um, image created, right? So is this true? Yes, it is. Because there is our image, new image.png. And if we look at it, here we can see the eyeball. Now, this looks very similar to the red eyeball. And the reason is because we literally just drew it on a canvas and then created a new image by saying draw image. But what happens if we start playing around with the X and Y value? So if we say X and Y is 200, or actually let's make the Y 400 and save it and run it again. If we look at the new image, it shifted the whole image downwards. And that's because it started drawing the image 200 pixels from the left and then 400 from the top to the bottom, right? For the Y. And then it drew the image there. Um, the same thing will happen is if we change the width and the height um, of what we want to draw, then the image will be smaller that we draw on the new image. Okay, so there's just 100 by 100 pixels. But what we want to do is keep this to 1000, keep this to zero for now. Later on, we'll look at dynamicness and we'll refactor this code so we can reuse it. So that we'll do in the next episode, in the next video. Thank you so much for looking um, at what I'm doing this far. I hope you're still excited about this project. So please join me in the next video. We will actually start um, creating, refactoring the code to make it much more reusable and actually start drawing different layers.